It sure works better if I turn my mic on. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you with us tonight, those that have already popped in. And I trust you'll enjoy the message tonight as we continue sharing on confession. As we continue sharing on confession. Praise God. Uh, we talked about last week from Proverbs 8.21 that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And uh, we talked about how the words of our mouth govern our lives using that as a, um, a uh, example that when we set the thermostat to a temperature, the, um, the uh, air unit, either heat, air conditioner or heat, kicks in and runs until it reaches that temperature. And as long as you leave that thermostat set there, it will maintain that, that level of air temperature. And so we use our words to set the temperature, as it were, of our life. And so it is important that we speak words of faith, words of life. Uh, if you don't like, or if you're not interested in being defeated, don't speak defeat. Hallelujah. And uh, we talked about how we got to get the right words from the right place and say what God's word says. If you want what God has for you, say what God says about you. Hallelujah. If you want what God has for you, say what God's word says about you. If you line up with the word, you will walk in his blessing. And um, <clears throat> so we kind of ended up there last week uh, talking about meditating in his precepts, our delights in the law of the Lord, and in your law, his law do we meditate day and night. So it's important that we recognize the extreme value of meditating in the Word of God, depositing the Word of God into our lives, making the Word of God, having the Word of God take first place and preeminence in our thought and in what we feed upon, hallelujah, so that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks and we'll speak the word. We'll speak life. We'll speak faith. We'll speak what God declares. You know, the Bible says that um, God in talking with Abraham and Abraham believed God, but he believed that God did this. Uh, the Weymouth translation says the God who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. I believe Romans 4, maybe 4, 4, 4, 16 out of the Weymouth. Um, I know it's, it's over in Romans, but instead of just kind of leaving us guessing, because I wasn't really in my notes right here, um, I want to confirm it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, uh, I have made thee the father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And the way in the translation I said, says it this way, who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. So if your body's sick and it's not well, we make reference to things that do not exist as though they did. We call ourselves healed in the name of Jesus. We speak the word of God over our life. We don't have enough money. We start speaking um, financial blessing and prosperity. Hallelujah. Uh, if you're weak, the Bible says in the Old Testament Scripture, let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, say, let's say, I am strong. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And praise be to God forever. We can be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And so we want to move on now into Deuteronomy chapter 30. Look back there into the Pentateuch. One of the five books of Moses. Hallelujah. Looking down into verse 10. Verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up into the heaven and bring it to us that we may hear and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea 
that thou shouldest say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil, and that I commanded thee, hallelujah, this day life and good, death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply unto the Lord, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the... All right, so we're back. I hope, I hope I'm not sure what we missed. I noticed the camera was blinking, meaning we, uh, we lost connection somewhere there, so... <clears throat> um, but we finished reading Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 10 through 16. Uh, notice in that passage, uh, he, he says, The word is now thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Um, hallelujah. Praise God. That thou mayest do it. Look in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 11. What saith it? The word is now thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, see, here's the New Testament revelation. The word of faith, which we. <clears throat> what saith it? The word is now thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So we have Deuteronomy, the Old Testament scripture says, what is it? You know, shall we ascend into heaven and bring him down? Shall we go into the depths and bring it up? Uh, but where, what is it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth that thou may doest it. Paul, in writing, elevates that into New Testament doctrine and clarifies it. Remember, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament concealed is the Old Testament revealed. And so he brings clarity to what he's talking about there in Deuteronomy, calls it the word of faith, which we preach. And then he goes on and explains that if thou shalt be, um, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now again, the word saved is sozo in the Greek, the lead word of the sozo word group, the, the verb. Sozo is not limited in meaning to simply the due birth. It does cover um, physical health. It does cover deliverance from temporal evils, financial prosperity, being made whole. It is an all-inclusive word. So if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of your body, that Jesus is Lord of your finances, if Jesus is Lord of your soul, your mind, if Jesus is Lord over your circumstances, you'll be saved, healed, delivered, set free, made whole, glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, how do we get there? He goes on further down in chapter 16 and says this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we get, remember Paul says, the word of faith which we preach. <clears throat> We're not just talking about going here and using mind over matter, you know, the power of positive thinking. There is power in positive believing of God's word. Glory to God. I said there is power in the positive believing of God's word. Amen. It's imperative we understand. We're not talking about um, Simply using mind over matter, you know, trying to use some psychosomatic uh, method in which we obtain things. We are talking about believing the ever eternal, everlasting word of the living God, which he spoke out of his mouth, which he decreed himself over in Isaiah chapter 55. Let's run over there real quick. Isaiah chapter 55. We look down into verse 8. God says here, he says, 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. And let's stop right there. God's ways and God's thoughts are higher than ours. What does that mean? If you're thinking and you're doing different than what his word says, you're wrong. You're doing it wrong. Well, I just believe. It doesn't matter that you just believe if what you just believe is not the word of God. Because you're just believing doesn't produce faith. It is believing the word of God that produces faith. It is the power of the word to create faith on the inside of you. And that as you speak it, you release its power into the circumstances of life. He goes on and says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So here again, we have the connection of the word to faith, the, the connection of the word to our confession, the connection of the word to our believing makes it clear, makes it plain. You know, Romans again tells us that it was the word of faith that they preached. Romans 10, 16 and 17, that um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. <clears throat> so this segues back into what we we're saying last week. Um, you got to get the right information from the right place if you want the right answer. Hello. You got. How many of you have ever called a um, a customer service line? And you got Billy Bob on there who don't want to do his job. And so he just makes up stuff on the fly to get you off the phone. Now I have people I know, some of my own family that will make stuff up on the fly. I won't call their name. But they're a sandwich between two other siblings. <laughs> yeah. I'm just messing on my I'm just messing on my baby. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you know, you've called customer service before and got the person who didn't know what they were talking about. And, they, and, and you and, and there's sometimes um, Janie and I were, were computer programmers. Well, I, I still do, I still write programs. I write church software. Uh, she doesn't. Um, she, she doesn't want to. I do. I still enjoy. I still write. I still enjoy writing code. Um, and all the church software is written by me. And troubleshot. You know, I, I enjoy doing it. <clears throat> but sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll start talking to you know, a customer service representative about something. And you know that you're right on the right vein. You just need to, for them to tell you what's missing. You know, if, what, 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 what is it I'm not connecting? I know there's a way to do this. Oh, it can't be done. You know, you know it just won't, it won't do that. I've hung up the phone before. Called back, got a different person, and got a completely different answer that worked. So if you don't get the right information from the right place, you won't get the right answer. Hello. So our guaranteed right place is God's word. Not a man's interpretation of God's word. I could, I could, mis I could misinterpret what the word said. I could be wrong. 
and have stood in the pulpit before and said, I was wrong about this. Hallelujah. And I'd rather, I'd rather say, admit I was wrong than keep you believing that what I said was right if it was wrong. I've corrected before. Um, but you can be guaranteed when you go to the Word, it's always true. It's the right answer. You're getting it from the right place. You're getting the, you're getting the right information from the right place. And that will produce the right result. Hallelujah. And so we have to have that word in us. But notice in Deuteronomy, he says something very interesting. See that I have set before thee blessing and cursing, life and death. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not sure if that's really a hallelujah. Well, the life and the good is, the life is, and the blessing is, but the death and the other stuff isn't. <laughs> Are y'all here? You've gone home. Okay, one person's still here. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we have to make sure um, that we're keeping the word in us, that blessing is coming upon us. A good measure, man, out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth evil things. Matthew 12, 35. Hallelujah. Proverbs 2, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide them, my commandments with thee. Hallelujah. We are to hide his words, keep his commandments with us. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2, my son, forget not my law, but let thine eye heart keep them, keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. It is so important. I'll say again. It is so important. Glory to God. That we keep the word of God before us. That we keep the word of God in our heart. That we sow the counsel of his word. The wisdom of his word. The light of his word into our hearts. So that the treasures we withdraw from. The treasures we make our withdrawals from is his word. Now, what you don't want is to put a million dollars in the bank and then go to the bank and try to withdraw out of the wrong account. You won't get anything. You want to withdraw out of the good things you've deposited. And you don't want bad deposits. Hello? Hello? I mean, over the years, you know, stuff, you know, people write bad checks. You go out, you deposit checks, you pay a bill with it, you know, and next thing you know, that check bounces at the bank, and then your check you wrote bounces because the check that you deposited to cover it bounced, and so now yours bounces, and everybody's paying fees, and it's all bad. It's not good. What'd you do? You 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 took you uh, withdrew on a bad treasure. Now, not deliberately, but you, if you put, see, we don't deliberately try to sow bad seed into our life. Unless you're stupid. Now, stupid people do, but people who've got any kind of sense don't want a bad harvest. They're not looking for a bad harvest. They want a good harvest. Um, the fallacy is they think you can plant the wrong kind of seed and get the right kind of harvest. It doesn't work that way. So important, we take the word of God. Remember, God said, my word will accomplish the thing whereto I sent it. Brother Hagin used to say, he said, always find scripture that covers what you're believing God for. And he would say this, at least two or three. I always find scripture that covers what you're praying and believing God for. Why? Because the word of God is the power to produce faith to receive what you're believing for. What if I can't find scripture that covers it? Then you can't pray about it. Hello? You can't make them up. We do, we, we got, we do have a book that's not considered canon uh, by any theological school of thought. It's called the Book of First Opinions. And I think by now they're probably working on the Book of Second Opinions. Hello. And those are all the things that people dream up and go out and, speak and say stuff and make it sound like Bible. First Opinions 1-1. One, one. The Lord helps those who help themselves. Verse 2. Cleanliness is next to godliness. You get the idea? Grandma used to quote that to you. 
Or mama may have quoted it to you. You know? And boy, you thought it was the Bible. I mean, you thought it was Bible. The way they, they quoted it with King James Elizabethan. The Lord helpeth those that helpeth themselves. Hello? Dear Lord, if it's not Bible, if it's not the Word of God, it's not a good treasure. So let's sow the Word. Let's meditate the Word. And as we said from these scriptures we read tonight so far, that connection between the Word of God and faith and confession and believing and receiving is integral. It's integrated. It is, it is a non escapable reality. There's an eternal truth. There's no way around it. Are you here? You're going home. It must be connected to the word of God. Why? Because God says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it shall accomplish the thing whereto I sent and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Hallelujah. So Bible confession. Now, remember, we talked about last week, there are different types of confession in the Bible. Confession of sin, confession of the sinner to get saved, confession uh, of when, in broken fellowship. Um, the uh, church at Rome uses confession to the priest to get ab ab absolved of your sin. And none of those are what we're talking about right here. We're talking about speaking the word of God in order to receive the things God has decreed and promised to us in salvation. That if they shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that he has raised you, that he's been raised from the dead, you shall be saved, sozo, saved, healed, delivered, prospered, kept safe from temporal evils. The all-inclusive word of salvation. Hallelujah. And so uh, we must have the word of God on the matter. Because without the word, there is no basis for faith. I'll say that again. Without the word, there is no basis for faith. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So, once we are getting the right words, or the, the, the right information from the right place, we're, we're speaking life instead of death and evil. We're receive, we want to receive from God. What do we do next? When we make our confession of faith. Now, not, we're not meditating. We, we believe what we're saying now. We're, we've, we've arrived in the place that, you know, we've, we've looked in the Word of God. We believe the Word of God. The Word of God is true to us. And we're speaking. And we know that we believe that we received it. What do we do at that point? Hebrews 4.14. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now, the word profession, translated so, uh, so in the King James, in many other translations is translated confession. Same Greek word. Hallelujah. Um, but the word, hold, the, the phrase hold fast uh, comes from a word meaning to cause a state to continue. You understand what I mean? I'm not talking about the state of North Carolina. We're talking about a, a state. Um, somebody help me define state real quick. Uh, our, our synonym. Um, a state of existence. A um, Huh? Someone's looking it up on their phone in, in the thesaurus. You know, the state of being, you know, to, to cause a... Um, circumstance a situation did we find a nope okay to cause something that is that, that is in a certain thing to stay that way okay a condition a state of being to cause that to what to continue to continue does it slip away does it does it dissolve it continues um, the state of uh, ice in its state of being, you know, it's frozen water, frozen water. It's a state of, it's a state of being for ice uh, of water, frozen water, ice to hold fast. That is to keep it frozen.
keep it in the freezer. It was that state will continue as long as the temperature is below 32 degrees. And here he says, let us hold fast, continue in that state of believing our profession, what we confessed. Let us continue to hold fast. Let us continue in that state of believing. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> praise God. So the word fast meant that hold means to um, be strong and mighty and prevail. So be strong in holding your position of faith. So that's, that's really what he's saying. Be strong in holding your position of faith. Hallelujah. Which, is, which was released out through your profession, through your confession. Don't waver. Hebrews 10, 23 says, using the same phrase, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. See, here, um, we have the reason we can hold fast, that we could be, be strong in continuing in our state of believing what we've confessed because he is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Thank God. God is faithful. Can you say amen? What? He is faithful that promised. We've been teaching out of First Peter on, sun, um, on Sunday mornings. Or Second Peter, Second Peter, and say Second Peter chapter one. Um, they're given unto whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Notice he gave us exceeding great and precious promises, that we might be partakers of the divine nature. How do we partake of him? We partake of him through his word. We partake of his nature by feeding on his word, by depositing his word, by meditating in his word, by living in his word. And he's faithful that promise. Meaning what? Now, I know we got people who come along and want to be real deep spiritual, speak with authority, with a weird language sound. Or you want to articulate with an accent that isn't the normal. And make it sound like they're really deep and with understanding and wisdom. <laughs> They'll say stupid stuff. Hello. Well, God promised it, but he don't have to do it. He's God anyway. He can do what he wants to do. Well, not and stay God. To promise and then refuse to fulfill the promise when it, when the conditions of the promise are met is a lie. Now out there, if, um, I look at it, I see um, I see the Schubert's out there, and I say um, Dick and Ellie, if you'll get in your car and drive over and be at my house in the next thirty minutes, I'm gonna give you five hundred dollars. Yeah. You hop, and of course they all of a sudden they just checked out of the thing here. They get in their car and they drive over here and they show up on the front doorstep in 29 minutes and 30 seconds. And I was, and I look at them and say, I changed my mind. What am I? I'm a liar. Now that was an example. It's not real. I'm not, I'm not giving out $500 tonight. I was just, so don't go get in your car. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, but if I, if I did say that and, and they acted on that, and fulfilled the conditions which I set. And when that time came time to do what I said I would do, I said, I've changed my mind. I'm a liar. You can't cut it any other way. For God to make promises, and most promises have a condition with them, um, but if God to make promises, and we meet the condition. Hello? And God to come back when you go to say, okay, uh, you know, you said this, I did that. And he got God come back and go, well, I changed my mind. I'm not doing it. 
I'm just God. And I, I've just, you know, I decided that I'm not going to do it. Oh, oh, Dick said he was on his way. Did I stop you in time? <laughs> yeah, you, I did stop you in time, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. All right. I've made it public. I was only joking. Hallelujah. Before, before. All right. Anyway, if we take the word of God and act on the word of God, a promise of God, and meet the conditions of that word, and then go to God and say, Father, I've, I did what you asked me to do, and you said do this, and you would do this, and him go, I'm not going to do it. I'm God. I changed my mind. He lied. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can, you can motorboat all you want to. I'm sorry. Dick said, oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, you can motorboat blah, 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 all you want to about it. For God not to do what he said he would do when he said he would do it, and you met the condition of faith, would be a lie. Making him subordinate to Satan, because Satan is the father of all liars. So what, and now listen, here's, here's the bottom. God can't lie. God doesn't lie, but he can't lie. It's impossible for him. He's not a man that he, he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. That's not who God is. And so um, those, the people who want to make excuses for failure and make excuses as to why things don't happen. Uh, number one, you can't blame it on God. It's always easy to throw somebody else under the bus when it didn't go the way you thought it should go. But you can't throw God under the bus and blame him for the failure of not receiving what he promised. Hello? Hello? It doesn't work that way. God is faithful to his word, which is why we need to renew our minds to the word of God. Take his word. Believe his word. Act on his word. And be so full of his word that it, it governs us. And we hold fast to it. Which leads us to the uh, recording in the Bible of the woman with the issue of blood. And Mark, I like Mark's version. And I know we recently covered this, but we'll, you know, it, it fits into this message right here. Mark 5, 25 through 34. And a certain woman. And what does that mean? This isn't a parable. This is, this is accurate. Which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians. And it's been all that she had was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Now the Amplified, and now it's referred to as Amplified Classic, which is the only one I would have. The other one's just, it's a waste of money. Okay. The Amplified Classic says, For she kept saying, If I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. Now, that's the, that is the Greek phraseology. That is the Greek construct there. It is in a continual ongoing tense. It's not a one-time thing. She said, she kept on saying. She kept on saying. In fact, and we'll just kind of use King James because it, it preaches better. And she said and kept on saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. 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 She held on to her. She put it out there, man, and she hung on to it. Okay? And straightway the fountain of the blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue, or power, hallelujah, had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? He even said, didn't say who touched me as, you know, touched my arm or my foot, 
who touched my clothes. And his disciples, the spiritual bunch, you know, they're more like the Brady bunch, said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked, and see, Jesus was just not, you got to think he would hit his head sometime and think, wow, I could have had a V8 instead of having these guys. <coughs> Those, they were circus clowns sometimes. They just didn't get it until later. They got it later. Thank God they did. But there were days they didn't get it. Like to the day with the woman with the issue of blood. I mean, he goes, who touched me? Master. Yeah, they got me. Man, Jesus, you didn't, you didn't get to sleep last night. The multitude is thronging thee. Everybody is touching you. But only one person in that crowd touched him with faith. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go and be healed of thy plague. Now we know that Jesus obviously had healing power resonant within him. It was there. A part of his ministry, in some cases you could say up to a third of his ministry, was healing the sick. We know that it was possible to touch him and get healed. But also from this passage, it was possible to touch him and to get nothing. So if you could touch him and be healed, or you could touch him and nothing happened, then what was the difference maker in that? Faith. I said faith. For she said and kept on saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. 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 And when she touched his clothes, Jesus knew right that moment virtue went float out of him. It was there for all of them. Just like when Jesus went into the house and there was doctors and Pharisees and lawyers, uh, doctors of the law and Pharisees um, from every town around Judea and Jerusalem and every town around about. And the Bible says this in that passage. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. If you read the whole passage, none of them got healed. Well, it wasn't God's will. Then why did he have the power present to heal them? Let's be real here. He would not have his power. God doesn't do things without purpose. He doesn't have his power present to heal unless it's his desire to heal. The only person that got healed was not there when the Bible says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The lawyers, the doctors, the Pharisees, all those from every town around about that were in the house. And there came four guys with a guy on a stretcher, couldn't get in because of the crowd, climbed up on the roof, ripped the roof off and dropped him down in the middle. And when Jesus saw their faith, that guy got healed. And everybody else just went out going, we've seen strange things today dummy you could have been healed hello they went out just kind of marveling about what they saw instead of realizing and understanding that everybody in that place could have been made whole had they met the same condition the other guy met the condition of faith our faith is released primarily by the words of our mouth That if you'll confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. 
And again, saved. Go back to that saved word, saved. Saved, healed, made whole, preserved, delivered, kept. Our confession of faith is to be held fast to after we've received that faith from God's word. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Well, I finished up. I'm finished with my notes. I praise the Lord and um, trust you were ministered to. We're going to receive our Wednesday night tithe and offering. If you, um, if you need a virtual tithing envelope, uh, just raise your hand, then click on Square Cash app or, or PayPal. Hallelujah. And place it right into that little uh, electronic envelope right there. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And then send it on its merry little way. Praise God. Amen. You know, the Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. Father, we pray over all those that are watching tonight, those that are giving now their tithe and their offering. We thank you, heaven's windows are open unto them, and you empty out on them blessings. They do not have room enough to receive. In the majestic and mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 We're so glad you could join us tonight. Don't um, forget to be with us at Sunday at 1230. We're still meeting over at New Life Family Church in High Point, technically or Jamestown address, uh, 6701 Ken Coy Road. Uh, they've graciously allowed us to use their, their church facility for our service on Sunday, and uh, we're, we're appreciative of that. Glory to God. I called the community center the other day. They're still closed. So um, thank God he's bringing us into our own place, into our own land. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Well, listen, um, so glad to be with you tonight and uh, so thankful that you could be with us. And I want to uh, remind you that whatsoever or whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. We love you. See you next time here. Faith and Victory Church online.